Content of this channel is for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. You're tuned in to the Green Gorilla channel. Please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification button. And please, feel free to share the video. Thank you.
What's good, everybody? I'm the G with a PhD, and you're tuned in to the Green Gorilla Channel, the place where black men can express themselves freely, straight up, no chasers. And before I get things started, I want to give a shout out to all of the members of the Green Gorilla Channel. So let's take care of that right now, shall we? Let's do it. Yes, I want to give a shout out to Ab Media 83, NJ Progressive Indy, Damon Harris, Brian McMurray, Ethan Hines, Mr. Lou Meth, TD Hip Hop Media, Drew Main, Shop Talk Live, Jones Boy, Ryan Jackson, The Face, Mr. Heat, David the Man, Afro Analyst, NEU, Ronan Martin, Black Wizard, ADOS, Camp Low, Isa Abdul Sahir, Sir Anthony, Deshaun Nolly, Aaron Lloyd, MLR, Charles Rogers, Black Dog, Brother Love, Infamous Chillin', Universal 178, Black Square 404, Rashid Barnes, Aaron Smith, DH, C Truth the Revelator, Gold Professor, The Nameless Protagonist, Black Till Ned Stark, uh, Arthur Unknown, Odd Collard, Roderick Jackson, Dr. Tia San Johnson, Brian Williams, Kalan Jakala, Sherrod Martin, Ricky Dawson, Cedric Bowman, True 7360, BK Born Shaheed, James Washington, Hostel ADEP, Seventh Coast Dojo, W. Pierre One, Roguish the Buildmonger, I Care, Force Windu, Lady Miss Thing Green, BGS Ivmore, and Marvin Battle Jr. Thank you for being members of the Green Gorilla Channel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being members of the Green Gorilla channel. Thank you. And if you would like to become a member of the Green Gorilla channel, well, here's what's good, everybody. I'm the G with a PhD. And you're tuned in to the Green Gorilla Channel, the place where black men can express themselves freely, straight up, no chaser. Today, I want to introduce you to my new membership program that consists of five levels where you can invest in the Green Gorilla Channel on a monthly basis and receive level specific perks. Memberships are special because they improve the quality of the content of the channel and will help me to be able to keep the channel going. Now to participate in the Green Gorilla Channel membership program, all you have to do is hit the join button, which is located right next to the subscribe button on my channel page. Now for all of my subscribers who decide not to participate in my membership program, nothing will change. The content will keep coming the way it always has. Thanks for watching and be careful out here people. Bless. And look, just in case there was somebody who didn't get the message the first time, let me reiterate it again. The content of this channel is for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Yes, every now and then you might hear a few words that you probably shouldn't hear, or maybe some words that shouldn't be spoken, but we're able to express ourselves freely, straight up, no chaser on the Green Gorilla channel. And I know you're probably wondering, what in the hell is going on with the look of the Green Gorilla's channel? Things look a little bit different. Instead of, you know, the audio visualizer popping off of the Green Gorilla, you see this kit looking like audio visualizer. But uh, yeah, it's a, a new little joint I hooked up. Because I'm not broadcasting straight from StreamYard. I'm using OBS. So if you can hear me, and I'm just worried about whether or not I actually have sound right now. If you can hear me, put a number one in the chat. Put a number one in the chat if you can hear me. Everything is loud and clear. And uh, if, if I get that okay, I'm going to proceed. I just want one person to... There you go. That's all I need. So the last time I was with you, uh, we had a conversation about Robert Staples and 
the paper, for the most part, uh, was concerning or was dealing with a subject matter related to the black family. And, you know, I went into this big spiel uh, about how related to Robert Staples, right? How there's an ideal about black family life. And then there is a reality related to the black experience and structures which hamper and hinder people's ability to fulfill their ideals. And in this case, he's talking about the ideals surrounding and related to family life. So I did that last time. And I only got halfway through it. So what I want to do is pick up where I left off and kind of go through that latter part of the paper. Okay. So I'm glad I did this on a Sunday because I'm breaking out a new format to the show, so to speak. Well, I'm just using di different technology. So let's see if it works out. If it don't work out, it don't work out. But if it does work out, it does. I don't know how many people out there like the stream at the current moment, but I want you, I want to encourage you to like the stream. You see the, you see the thumbs up, hit the thumbs up, man. Hit the button, hit the like button. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition into the latter part of this paper. But while I do that, I want you to keep in mind that this is, again, the second part of a video series. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to go back and check that out. All right? So let me transition to this. And don't let your eyes strain over this because uh, when testing this earlier, I found that it kind of doesn't give you a clear capture of the screen, not as clear in as you know, with as much fidelity of, as I would like, but, you know, we're going to make do with what we got. So let me just transition to the screen and get that popped up. And then let me read the rest of this article. Okay. So the section that we're dealing with right now is the section related to family ideology versus structural conditions. And from time to time, I'll duck in and out of this. Right now, I can't see what's going on on YouTube, but hopefully I can keep this with under an hour, okay? I'm going to take a break after one section and check on what's going on out there in streamland. Uh, but after I finish this section, I'm like, again, I'm going to take a break and see what's going on, and then I'll finish the rest up after I take that break. So let me dig right into it. So... Robert Staples says, and you might get angry and upset about this. And if you do, that's okay. But at least we need to dig through this and see if there's any credibility to anything that he says. All right? So, the basis of a stable family rests on the willingness and ability of men and women to marry, bear and rear children, and fulfill socially prescribed familial roles. In the case of women, those roles have been defined traditionally as the carrying out of domestic functions, such as cooking and cleaning, giving birth to children and socializing them, providing sexual gratification, companionship, and emotional support to their husbands. There is an abundant evidence that black women are willing and able to fulfill those roles. Now, again, this article was written in 1985. Things have changed socially and culturally. I don't know too many women at the present day who are willing to engage in domestic functions of the kind such as cooking and cleaning without arguing that men also have to do their fair share. I just, I'm, I'm a 70s baby. In 85, I was, what, 14? By the time I reached 25, 26, that had already flipped. But that's just my opinion, okay? Uh, emotional support. Man, look. 
Here's the deal. Men and women are going to argue. They're going to get into conflict with one another. But nowadays, it's easy for women to disentangle themselves from familial relationships. And oftentimes, I mean, they get attitudinal as I don't know what, man. As fuck. Okay? It happens. But men get attitudinal too. I'm not going to put all the onus on women related to this. But shit. Emotional support. Macroscopically, I don't see a whole lot of social support for black men. I just don't see it. But that's just my viewpoint. All right? Conversely, the roles of men in the family are more narrowly confined to economic provider and family leader. But there are indications that a majority of black American males cannot implement those roles. That's a hell of a statement to make. Because black men have to be the economic provider. We live in the context of a different world. Women are able to engage the marketplace, the workplace. And oftentimes, in this culture, in this day and age, a lot of times women, black women, can get jobs more readily than black men. And I think he's going to talk about those kind of conditions and express them. Now, he may not couch or express those conditions in a way that's amenable to stroking the egos of black men, but it's just something he's saying. It's something he's saying. So I'm going to get angry at it myself, but I'm going to deal with it. All right. When it comes to a choice between remaining single or getting married, individuals do or often do a cost benefit analysis. Marriage is frequently a quid pro quo arrangement. The desire to enter and maintain a conjugal relationship is contingent on their perspective of the benefits that can be acquired and conversely of the anticipated cost. When selecting a black mate, women must consider a pool from which they will draw. 98% of marriages with a black female uh, bride, the groom will be a black male. Now, I don't know what those numbers are now, but I'm assuming that they're still somewhere around the same rate. Maybe 90%, something like that. Maybe y'all in the audience know better than I know. But I went over this paragraph and stuff like that before, but we got to pick up where we left off. Hence, her pool consists of unmarried black males. With a variety of attributes, the most distinguishing characteristic of that pool is the shortage of men relative to the number of women during the marriageable years. According to the U.S. Bureau of Census, there are almost 1,500,000 more black women than men over the age of 14. By the consensus, excuse me, by the Census Bureau's own account, the under account of black males means that about 925,000 black males exist that were not added to the black population total. It should be noted that the unaccounted black male is likely to be transient and unemployed. Now, transient is a fancy word for he has no stability. He's in and out of different living conditions or living arrangements. He's not settled. He's the rolling stone that the Temptations was talking about. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. Since there is an excess number of black males at birth, the subsequent shortage of black males over the age of 14 must be attributed to their higher infant mortality rate and the considerably greater mortality rate of young black males through such causes as homicide. Now, we know the homicide rate is up amongst black men. It's high. Accidents, suicide, drug overdose, and war casualty. The major problem for black women, however, is not the quantity in the available supply of potential mates, but the quality. Whereas black women may select a mate on the basis of a number of attributes, a minimum prerequisite is that he be gainfully and regularly employed. According to a study by Joe and you, Almost a majority of working age black males fail to meet those minimum prerequisites. That's a hell of a thing. That's that's a hell of a thing right there, man. All I can say is wow. I mean, for real. All I can say is wow to that, man. Wow.
Wow. After an analysis of the economic consensus data, they concluded that 46% of the 8.8 million black men of working age were not in the labor force. That's damn near 4 million black men. That's another wow. That's another wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Based on 1982 stats, they found that 1.2 million black men were unemployed, 1.8 million had dropped out of the labor force, and 186,000 were in prison, and 925,000 were classified as missing because the Census Bureau said it could not locate them that's sad man that's sad that's some sad shit now this is in 1985 that's sad man that's sad furthermore their study overstates the number of desirable and available black males in the marriage pool even with the census undercount, there are still a half million more black women over the age of 14 than black men. Also, we must subtract from the marriage pool black men with certain characteristics by which they substantially outnumber black women. Among those characteristics would be blacks serving in the armed forces. Approximately 90% of them will be male. The U.S. Bureau of Census in 83 reports that there were 415,000 blacks under arms in 1982, representing 20% of all United States military personnel. It could be stated reliably that a large number of those black males had poor prospects for employment in the civilian labor force. The question is why? Why? Well, we, I think we all know why. Because black men are perceived as a threat. Or they're characterized as not having the appropriate skills. Or maybe they don't have the appropriate skills because of the dismal and fucked up school system that we got. Which is crazy as a motherfucker. But it is what it is. That's crazy. Crazy. Hmm, just crazy. While the salaries and other benefits of military personnel have improved in recent years, and a number of black soldiers are currently married, the military does take out of circulation a number of marriage-aged black males by stationing, uh, stationing them in foreign posts. I don't know why I can't pronounce that word. Stationing them in foreign posts and isolated military stations. Furthermore, once their period of enlistment ends, Black veterans experience a higher rate of unemployment. Now, why would that be the case? They're supposed to be the first ones employed, right? Especially if they serve the country. But I guess they're supposed to be depressed and suffering from post-dramatic stress syndrome or something like that when they get out. Anyway, furthermore, once their period of enlistment ends, black veterans experience a higher rate of unemployment, even in relation to black civilian males with no military service. So when they get out of the military, they got less of an opportunity to get a job. Their prospects of getting a, a gaining employment are less than men who've never gone to the military. That's a slap in the face. That's a slap in the face. Hence, military service only postpones the entry of black males into the ranks of the unemployed. One reason black males have a higher rate of reenlistment than their white counterparts. Can't find no work. Except for the fucking military. That's sad too. That's some sorry shit. That's sad. Included in the factors that reduce the number of desirable black males in the marriage pool is the high rate of underemployed black males. The U.S. Civil Rights Commission reported that black men are overeducated for their jobs and have greater difficulty translating education into suitable occupations. 
And I just said that. That's fucked up, man. That most black men, I ain't going to say most, but a large number of black men are underemployed. Meaning that they don't have jobs commensurate with their level of education. That's fucked up. Even college educated black males have an unemployment rate four times their, uh, than their white peers. Among black males employed in the labor force, one out of three will suffer from employment in a given year. However, these facts serve to explain why black marriages dissolve, not why they never take place. So in other words, the ideology is that the black man has to be the financial provider. And if he's struggling, the fucking relationship is dissolved. Because that's what the ideology is centered around, right? You being able to give something or provide something. In Hampton's study, the respondents who reported the highest number of unemployment, pro uh, excuse me, of employment problems had a marital disruption at a rate three times higher than the overall rate for the sample. No romance without finance, huh? <laughs> Damn. Another group of black males regarded as undesirable or unavailable. So he already went to, he went to the military. He went to unemployment and underemployment. What's the next fucking whammy? Another group of black males regarded as undesirable or unavailable are those confined to mental institutions or who are otherwise mentally unstable. While their exact number is unknown, black males are more likely to be committed to mental institutions than are black women. And the strictures are, of racism are such that blacks are more likely to suffer from mental distress. In 1970, 249 whites per 100,000 population were confined to mental institutions, compared to 162 whites per 100,000 pop, uh, population. So the non white population is damn near double that or at least two-thirds of that blacks also use community mental health centers at a rate almost twice their proportion in the general population the rate of drug and alcohol abuse is much greater among the black population especially males based on their overrepresentation among patients receiving Treatment services. That's from the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. It's estimated that as many as one third of the young black males in the inner city have serious drug problems. Now, let me just say something about this, man. I, he's presenting data I've never seen before. I've never really actually gone over before. So, I mean, I know that black men have a whole host of problems and issues, but I didn't know. Uh, you know, drug abuse and uh, alcohol abuse was one of them, especially in light of new information related to, uh, you know, the kind of pathology that people typically or generally associate with drug use and alcoholism. Now, if you want to get information about how harmful sub such substances are, I think you need to appeal to contemporary research on the issue. And one such person uh, who does, uh, a black man, by the way, who does research on this issue is named Carl Hart. He wrote a book called High Price. And ultimately, his argument is, look, less than 20% of people who use alcohol and other illicit drugs actually become addicted to them. The vast majority of people who consume drugs, whatever they are, it could be methamphetamine, it could be crack cocaine, it could be cocaine, it could be ecstasy, it could be whatever the fuck drug it is, lean. Most people, do not become addicted to these substances, even heroin. Now, this is predicated upon empirical research and testing done on human beings. But I digress. The magnitude of the problem simply reinforces the fact that black women are seriously disadvantaged in choosing from the eligible and desirable males in the marriage pool. I mean, it's a hell of a way to put the shit, though. So black men are suffering from all these goddamn problems, but we're going to sit here and have a conversation about marriage and shit and whether or not a man is able to financially provide 
for another segment of the, uh, the black population. I mean, I understand this is the nature and the scope and the range of what he's discussing at the current moment, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But God damn. I mean, good googly motherfucking move. A large category of black males who fit into the desirable group must also be considered not available. By all reliable estimates, the black male homosexual population <laughs> is, lar is considerably larger than the black female homosexual population. What the fuck? Hold on, man. Wait a motherfucking minute. This shit is outdated as hell, man. <laughs> this shit is outdated, man. I can't do nothing but laugh at that, man. So more black men are gay than black women. All right, buddy. Okay, buddy, old pal. Based on the often quoted Kinsey estimate that 10% of the adult male population is homosexual, that would mean about 800,000 black men are not available to heterosexual black women. Of course, many of these gay males do marry for a variety of reasons and serve well in the roles of husband and father. But due to the increasing public tolerance of overt male homosexuality, it is reasonable to expect that fewer gay males will choose to enter into heterosexual marriages in the future. Finally, it should be noted that black men marry outside their race, uh, race at twice the rate uh, than that of black women. Okay. Although the shortage and desirability of black males in the marriage pool largely affects uh oh, we got another member. We got another. We got a new member to the Green Gorilla Channel. Uh oh, check him out. Check, check, check him out. <laughs> the Book of Ronin became a member of the Green Gorilla Channel. Thank you, sir, for your your participation and your membership. I appreciate that. Back to the lecture at hand. Back to it. So, uh, where was I at, man? In this bullshit. Here I am. Here I am. Okay. We're talking about gay black men. And then we're talking about also swirlers amongst the black men. <laughs> black male swirlers. Although the shortage and desirability of black males in the marriage pool largely affects the non college educated black women's marriage, oh, black woman's marriage chances, the college educated black female is not spared the problem if she desires to marry within her race and socioeconomic level. In 1980, there were 133,000 more black women enrolled in college than black men. Shit, I bet you that number is higher now. About 57% of all black college students is what we're talking about. Moreover, black male students have a much higher attrition rate than their female peers, meaning they drop out. In the University of California system, for instance, only 12 of every 100 black male students graduate within four years. Oh, my God, man. That's just fucking sad, bro. If that shit was happening then, that's sad, man. That's real sad, bro. That's really sad, man. Thus, in 1981, 36,200 of 60,700 bachelor's degrees awarded to blacks went to women. That's 60%. And between the years, 1976 and 1981, black women receiving bachelor's degrees increased by 9%. And comparable black males declined by 9%. These same trends existed for graduate degrees during the years 1976 through 1981. Black women declined by 12% and black men by 21% in the receipt of master's degrees. In the receipt of the first professional degree, black women increased by 71%, while black men declined by 21%. And at the doctoral level, black men declined by 10%, while black women increased at a rate of 29%. College-educated black women do have the option of marrying men with less education and making a viable choice. In the past, 
as many as 50 percent of college educated black women married men of a so of a lower social economic level that's 50 percent of college educated black women married men of a lower economic level in the past and that's in 1956 1956 but increasingly there is resistance among these women to marrying down almost one-third of college educated black women remain unmarried past the age of 30. Of course, they face a similar short, excuse me, a similar shortage in the marriage pool of high male, uh, excuse me. Of course, they face a similar shortage in the marriage pool of male high school graduates and must compete with lesser educated black women for these same men. Also, such middle level men tend to marry early and have the most stable marriages in the black community i've noticed this myself i've noticed this myself the blue collar men who marry early they they tend to have marriages that last all these power couples these educated motherfuckers there's a problem with that there's something going on there i'm glad i'm reading this article because it's sniffing out some shit anyway also, such middle-level uh, men tend to marry early and have the most stable marriages in the black community. The marriage patterns of college-educated black males tend to put college-educated black women at a disadvantage. Many of these men marry women of a lower educational level. So, in, in other words, even black men who could marry them don't want to marry these educated black women. Many of these men marry women of a lower educational level and the interracial marriage rate is highest in this group of black men. Now, I'm about to come back to the, to the stream right fast. And I'm going to take a quick break. And uh, I'm just reading through this shit, man. It is what it is. You can think what you want to think about it. You can feel how you want to feel about it. I'm just reading through it, okay? And we're going to get through it. It's a Sunday. It is what it is. So I'll be back after these brief messages. And I'm going to read the rest of this. And also, please make sure to support the Green Gorilla channel if you can. I'm here to provide great and quality content for you. And uh, today we're just reading through this paper. And I promised you I would. But I think it's important. So I'll be back in a jiffy. content of this channel is for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Okay, we're back. You tuned in to the Green Gorilla channel. I'm the G with a PhD. This is the place where black men can express themselves freely. Straight up no chaser. If you're just now joining in, all I'm doing is going through a paper that I started reading Friday. I should have read it yesterday, but I was busy doing some shit. And so uh, I'm finally getting to it today. All right, so let's get back to the paper, shall we? And I'll get to the next section. Structural conditions and the changing black family. <laughs> There's no great mystery as to what has happened to the black family in the last 20 years. Now, this is a man who was writing a paper in 1985. Now, if it had already been fucked up then, what the hell do you think it is now? 
if the situation was fucked up then, the only thing I don't like about the shit is the way he's making all of these arguments without talking about the reasons why some of these disadvantages exist for black males. Why do those, why do those kind of disadvantages apply to black men? How have they come to be so prevalent amongst black men particularly? How the fuck, man? I'm waiting for your analysis on that. That's what I want to see. Anyway, there's no great mystery as to what has happened to the black family in the last 20 years. It is an acceleration of trends set in motion during the 60s. A highly sexualized culture, yes it is, via the media, clothing an example, has conveyed to American youth the notion that non-marital sexual, uh, sexual relations are not only acceptable, but required for individual fulfillment. That's the case. That is true. I give him. I give him a bomb on that one. All the rest of this shit thus far, it, it, it might be accurate, but the the framing of it all. I give him a bomb on that. It's the framing. Women are reaching puberty earlier and emotional maturity later. <laughs> shit. Hey, look. Just come out and say it, Staples. These young girls are fucking early. Come on, let's just keep it real. Furthermore, the consequences of teenage sexual behavior are counteracted somewhat by easier access to effective contraceptives and abortion. Uh-oh, he hit the buzz on that one. And the number of pregnant teenagers has not really increased. Only the proportion of births to that group of women as a result of the rapid decline in births to older married women. Let me read that again because I ain't quite sure what he's trying to articulate there. The number of pregnant teenagers hasn't really increased. Only the proportion of births to that group of women as a result of the rapid decline in births to older married women. In other words, man, you know, these young chicks getting it in. And while they getting it, <laughs> they getting it in. And uh, the older women are no longer married. So he's saying that it ain't increased. It's just that the number of married women who are having children has decreased. That's what he's trying to articulate there. While the non-marital sexual activity rate of black and white teenage women is converging, the black female is more likely to be engaged in unprotected intercourse and less likely to marry or have an abortion if she becomes pregnant. According to Zelnick and Kantner, only 8.5% of their black sample, which was 15 to 19 year olds, entered into marriage as an outcome of premarital pregnancy. 8%. Compared with 50.8% of comparable white women. God damn. <laughs> Uh oh, look! Somebody gave a, somebody somebody uh, kicked in with the super chat. Hey, look, y'all fucking around today, man. Y'all ain't donating a goddamn thing, man. I'm providing y'all with some good quality content. Thank you, Drone Ninja, for the super chat. I appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate the uh, the support and the help this fine Sunday afternoon. But anyway, y'all need to make Mike dance. So anyway. Getting back to it. That's a crazy number, man. Only 8.5% of their of the of the girls between 15 and 19 got married, but 50.8% of white women did. 
Uh oh, somebody else done made Mike dance. Michael Ross, thank you for your uh, contribution, sir. Appreciate it. You made Mike dance. Thank you for making Michael dance. <laughs> this shit is funny as a motherfucker, man. I can't do nothing but laugh at this crazy ass shit, man. <laughs> Oh, thank you for the super chat, man. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you for making Mike dance, man. If you want to see Mike dance, man, and do the glide and moonwalk and twist around and shit, hit up the super chat, man. <laughs> this shit is crazy. I told, hey, look, all yesterday, man, I was fucking around trying to figure out how to do this crazy shit. And I figured it out. But anyway, back to the lecture, man. While it is reasonable to question the wisdom of young black women attaining motherhood at such an early age, their decision to bear the children and raise them alone reflects their traditional values and limited options in life. Among black males their age, the official unemployment rate is 52%. Uh-oh, somebody else done hit the bitch up. Somebody else done made the motherfucker dance. You got, I'm, I'm going to let y'all see Mike dance. <laughs> Make Mike dance, baby. Anyway, uh, that shit is funny as a motherfucker to me. <laughs> Crazy, man. Look, okay, so look, look we got to get back to this shit, though, man. I'll be all day, man. Anyway, uh, Their decision to bear the children and raise them alone reflects their traditional values and limited options in life. Man, look here, man. I'm about to slap the shit out of this man, man. I mean, he's dead, man, so God bless his soul. But God damn, bro. It's like you out here, man, Cape and Superhole. I need to put the motherfucking cap and save him, uh, uh, Emoji on this motherfucker. I need to have that dude come out of the motherfucking phone booth. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You got black men suffering from all kind of maladies. We talking about unemployment, underemployment. We talking about mental instability. We talking about prison. We talking about a whole bunch of shit. And you talking about marriage, man? But it is the subject, though. It is the subject. Among black males their age, the official unemployment rate is 52%. So black males from ages 15 to 19, I'm assuming is what he's saying, is that 52% of those people are unemployed, or, or that demographic is unemployed. Right? Or among their... No, that's, that's wrong. Let me... Let me rewind that back. Let me let me rewind that, man. Sorry about that. I think I misquoted that. Among black males their age, the official unemployment rate is 52%. Yeah, I think he is talking about that. And as many as 75% of young black men remain outside the workforce. 75% of young black men remain outside of the workforce. Wow. I ain't mean to laugh. Let me stop that shit. I ain't mean to laugh at that. That shit ain't nothing to laugh at, bro. No. Why is it going through that motherfucker, man? I ain't trying to do I ain't trying to do no laughter. That shit that shit ain't funny, man. I'm working the kinks out. Well, anyway, man, let me get back to this shit. While unemployment, or excuse me, while employment may be easier for black women to obtain, it often will be in dead-end jobs that pay only half the wages earned by white males. Rather than remain childless and husbandless, these women choose to have the children and raise them alone. A good explanation of these life choices is given by Hortense Kennedy, president of Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> Ooh. 
right? <laughs> Having a child is probably the best thing that's going to ever happen to them in their whole lifetime. And the only thing they can contribute. This is not true in most other countries in the world. But if you belong to a class or a group of people who have no educational opportunities stretching out before them, no other goals, that's probably the single best thing that's ever going to happen in your life. And that is sad. That's sad. That's sad. The best thing that's ever going to happen to you in your life is to have a baby out of wear a lot. Or to a motherfucker that you have no intention of being with at all. That's crazy. Having limited educational and career options to set against bearing a child is not the only reason for the increase in female-headed households. A welfare system that often requires men to be absent from the home is part of the motherfucking problem. <laughs> hey, you know, he, hey, look, he's getting to it. Uh oh. <laughs> hey. Uh oh. Now he's, now he's starting to get there. Okay. And black women realize that the meager welfare payments are more reliable. Oh, shit. Fuck no. Look, he about to piss me off now. And black women realize that the meager welfare payments are more reliable than a class of men who may never know gainful employment in their entire lives. Hey, look, man. You starting to piss me off here, bro. You starting to get me upset, man. But I, hey, look, this is a black male perspective from me related to this guy. I don't know what he's doing or why he's couching this shit in these terms. But oh well, let's go. In general, unemployed men do not make good husbands and fathers. Although, I mean, excuse me, although we do have contemporary evidence which demonstrates that black men or more involved in the lives of their children than all other demographics. More so than that of white men. We know this. I got to look for the research on that. Because I know it exists. Uh, I know where to find it, but I, I can't recollect. I'm, I'm almost 50, so, you know. I'm getting a little senile, so, but I, I'll I'll provide a link to that in the description box. Since employment and income are the measure of a man's masculinity in this society, no romance without finance. Men who have neither do not tend to feel good about themselves or act very positively towards their wives and children. So if you broke, you treat your, pe you, you treat your wife and your kids like shit. Come on, bro. Come on, man. In the Hampton it's a 1980 study, for example, husbands who were not satisfied with themselves had a fairly high level of marital disruption. No romance without finance. No romance without finance. <laughs> However, the major reason for the increase in black female headed households is lack of desirable men who, with whom to form monogamous marriages. According to Joe and you, between 1976 and 83, the number of black families headed by women rose by 700,000. And the ranks of black men out of the labor force or unemployment increased by the same number. The same trend has existed for the last 25 years. Almost 75% of black men were working in 1960. And black families headed by women 
accounted for 21% of all black families in the same year. But by 82, only 55, excuse me, 54% of all black men were in the labor force. And 42% of all black families were headed by women. That's, that's some wild shit right there. That's a while. Having a child out of wedlock and failing to marry accounts for 41% of all black households headed by women. Shit, it's different now, ain't it a damn near 81%? Ain't, ain't that where it's at now? Another 51% are divorced or separated from their spouses. The marriage disruptions are generally susceptible to the same structural conditions that plague never married black women. Unemployment and underemployment, the public assistance complex, the educational system, the healthcare system, all produce economic and psychological alienation in the black male. As Hampton found, the pressures that push many black males out of other social institu uh, excuse me, institutions within society also work to push them out of marital relationships. I'll give him a thumbs up on that one. I'll give him a like on that. I'll give, give him a like on that. I mean, look, it ain't no strange secret, man, that the, the biggest brunt of racial domination and oppression is poured down squarely on the shoulders of black men. All you got to do is look at the structural conditions and you'll see that this animus that these white folks have are directed and targeted directly at black, man's, black men's fucking head. And they're doing it on purpose. This is purposeful. For every 1,000 black married persons with spouses present, the number of divorces increased from 92 and 71 to 233 in 81. The comparable increase for whites was, for, was from 48 to 100. Black separations increased from 172 to 225 per 1,000 married persons in the same period, while white separations rose from 21 to 29. That's, man, that, look, that's crazy. A number of social characteristics place blacks at risk for divorce. They have a higher rate of urbanization. Uh-oh, make Mike dance. Forrest Wendy, you done made Mike dance. I got to let you see that when it happens. If I wasn't doing any reading right now, you can see all of this shit unfold in real time. Thank you so much, sir, for your, uh, your, your contribution. They have a higher rate of urbanization, greater independence of women, earlier age at marriage, earlier fertility, a higher education and income levels for the wife, and lower income status for the husband. Most black marriages involve a wife who was more highly educated than her husband. In one out of five black marriages, the wife earns a higher income than her husband. One out of five. This incongruity between the socially assigned roles of the male as the primary provider and the wife as a subordinate member of the marital dyad may undermine the husband's self-esteem, frustrate the wife, and create marital dissatisfaction for both partners. Not if they realize it's a fucking game being played and stop trying to fit into this bullshit-ass role about who making the most, who going to be the goddamn boss and try to figure out how to fucking struggle through life together and raise these goddamn kids. And stop fucking trying to see who got the longest piss stream. 
Niggas be on some fucking bullshit, man. What's fucked up is, if you partnered up with somebody, and you know you live in a racist system, we done had yet, we done had centuries to figure the fuck out what's going on with white people, man, in this country. Operating under their fucking paradigms is some fucking stupidity. But fuck it, though. It is what it is. But you know, I, you know what I found odd though, before I even go on. I've dealt with college educated women. I've dealt with women who've had doctoral degrees, the whole fucking shebang. Okay? And what I found is, you know, and I've always made more men, more money than the women that I've been involved with. But that shit didn't make a fucking cotton picking red fucking cent difference. <laughs> I'm just being honest, man. Cooking, cleaning, all that shit didn't make a single fucking bit of difference. And I'm going to tell you, man, as a child, man, I was the motherfucking person who took care of cleaning the house because I was forced to do the labor by my mother and my stepfather. I'm just being honest, man. I could cook better than a motherfucking woman nine times out of ten. I can clean better than a motherfucking woman nine times out of ten. Make more money than a woman nine times out of ten. Got a good talent index. Very, you know, I, I talk a lot of shit. I'm ignorant at times. I do. I, I have to admit that I can't be an asshole. But at the same time, I'm a great conversationalist. I'm intellectually savvy. I have some sort of cultural and historical and philosophical perspective about the world I live in. That shit still didn't fucking matter. And it don't matter. It doesn't matter to a lot of motherfuckers to find themselves in similar circumstances, man. This is just the God is the honest truth, man, what I've experienced in my lifetime, man. Now, I've had some women who actually wanted to be a partner and they didn't want to get into a whole bunch of fucking pissing matches and having contests and being goddamn aggressive and shit. But then you got a certain group of black women, man. Them motherfuckers are aggressive as hell. And I don't fucking like that bullshit, bro. I'm just being honest, man. Entitlement. You're supposed to give me something. I don't expect nobody to give me anything. I expect, look, or I don't expect to have to give anybody anything. I expect for us, whoever I'm with, we plan, plot, strategize, and try to figure a way to get better and to grow richer and to have a more enjoyable life. That's all I've ever focused on. But some motherfuckers want to do it their way. His explanation is that when women have other means of support in the form of welfare or their own earnings, they, be, they may be less constrained to remain in a personally unsatisfying relationship. Alternatively, the wife may be satisfied with the husband's role, but her high income may threaten the husband's authority and status, undermining his self-concept so that he becomes unhappy. These problems of the black family are only variations of the general problems of American families. The direction of change in the family structure is basically the same for all racial groups in the U.S. and for the same reasons. Gutentag and Secord demonstrated that unbalanced sex ratios have certain predictable consequences for relationships between men and women. They give rise to higher rates of singlehood, divorce, out of wedlock births, and female-headed households in different historical epochs and across different societies. According to Aaron Reich, the breakdown of the family began in the 1950s when men began a flight from commitment 
to the husband and father role. In the case of the black family, it stems from the institutional decimation of black males. The institutional decimation of black males. Now, I have to see what he has to say about that. I want to see what he says about how this shit impacts black males. In my viewpoint, man, I'm just going to be honest, straight honest. Honest to God, honest to God, honest, 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 man. Black men need to be directing their energies towards something different than getting married and getting into some pussy, man. I'm just being honest. That's just my honest to God truth right there, man. Leave that shit alone and handle your business, man. That's my view on the shit, man. I'm just being honest, man. I'm just keeping it real right there, man. Black men need to be figuring out what the fuck they need to do on their own account to deal with these structural injustices and these institutional pressures because they are bearing down on our fucking shoulders like the weight of Atlas, man. I'm just being honest about that, man. I'm being honest about that. Now, I'm going to take another break, man. And when I come back, I'm going to finish this out. And then, because I'm already an hour and six minutes in, and I don't know, I don't intend on doing this for two hours tonight or, or this afternoon, man. I, I got some good shit to get to, and I wanna, I'm eager to get to it. That's why I'm doing this so early in the afternoon, okay? So let me have another break so I can catch my breath. And then when I come back, let me, let me switch over the scene, man. I should have switched over the scene. So let me, I'll come back after the break, after I catch my breath, and then we'll close out with the conclusion, and then I'll give my ending remarks, and uh, then I'll see y'all the next time. So quick commercial break, man. Be right back. You're back with the G with a PhD. This is the Green Gorilla Channel. It's a place where black men can express uh, black men can express themselves freely, straight up, no chases. And sometimes I use pejorative terminology. So, the content of this channel is for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. If you don't want to hear what I have to say, and you figure that it is objectionable, profane, morally reprehensible, leave. I'm here to have an open and a candid conversation about structural issues and about all sorts of issues that relate to black men and how we feel about them, how black men think about them. At least one black man who is not holding his tongue, who's going to say what he wants to say. And not be ashamed and afraid to do so. So if, if that's not what you're into, you're in the wrong spot. But having said all that, I'm going to dive back into the end of this, uh, this article here. And then after that, I'm going to close out. And I, I'm going to actually invite some people into the stream to see what they have to say about it. So let me get that invite link going right now. And after that, 
I'm going to uh I see what you're saying, Stingy. Uh Dr. Staples is no longer with us. He's passed. And if I had the opportunity to have Dr. Staples on the show, I would ask to have him on. Okay? I definitely would ask to have him on. But he's he's no longer with us. Okay? Now, again, he wrote this paper in 85. And I don't know if you're listening out there, Dr. Neil, man. I don't, you, you, you're going to have to tell me what you think about all this here, man. You know, and, and I'm sorry that I missed your stream earlier, man. I didn't hit the bell notification on the button after I subscribed to your channel. I made sure that I got the button hit now because I hate that I missed your show this afternoon. Okay, thank you, Ann Snap or Ann Sam for the uh, subscription. Appreciate that. Drop it like it's hard. Drop it like it's hard. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, man, go ahead and subscribe. It ain't going to hurt you to subscribe to the channel, man. So, I'm about to switch the scene, man, and get right back into it, man, and, and finish this up. So, the discussion. And this is the last part of it. The basic thesis here is that the dissonance between black family ideology, which is what it's supposed to look like, Two kids, a fucking dog, picket fence, black people having, young black people having things. <laughs> right? The dissonance between black family ideology and actual family arrangements is caused by the intervention of struct. Hold on. Okay, I'm trying to shoot the gun. Of structured or structural conditions that impede the actualization of black aspirations for traditional family life and roles. The central factor in this situation is the inability of black males to meet the normative responsibilities of husband and father. Questions may be raised as to how the problem has reached its present magnitude and why it is so pronounced among the black population. The answer appears to involve a combination of cultural and economic forces which have been ascendant in the last 20 years. Now, this is what I've been fucking waiting for. I hope I'm not going to get disappointed. Or maybe I am going to be disappointed. Who knows, man? A basic cause of black male unemployment has been the change in the economy and composition of the workforce. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you there. I'm starting... I'm starting to like what you're saying here, bro. Basic cause of black male unemployment has been the change in the economy and composition of the workforce. Automation and foreign competition have eliminated large numbers of jobs in manufacturing industries in the United States over the last couple of decades. The economy went from a Fordist economy, which was manufacturing based, to a post-Fordist economy with the outsourcing of jobs, the demechanization of the workforce also. So that's what he's talking about when he says automation. So you see this in urban centers all over the fucking United States, especially in the Midwest. St. Louis. Chicago. Now, I can't say the same about the South, but I can definitely say this, say it about Cleveland, a whole host of Midwestern cities that were burgeoning economic centers in the 60s. A lot of black people left the South and they moved to the West and the Midwest in order to escape what they considered to be a hostile terrain. And a whole host, a plethora of jobs that you could get as soon as you got out of high school. You could start a family, develop a career, and be able to fulfill those so-called roles. But what happens when the floor falls out or bottoms out? Automation and foreign competition have eliminated 
large numbers of jobs in manufacturing industries in the U.S. over the last couple of decades. Because black males were disproportionately concentrated in these industries, black males with years of seniority were displaced. And there were no high paying unionized occupations for younger and newer workers to enter. Even low paying menial jobs were automated or taken over by new immigrants, both legal and illegal. Uh oh, ADOS. The expansion of the economy was in the private sector's high technology and service industries, which brought black males into competition with burgeoning numbers of white women entering into the labor force. I've been telling you motherfuckers this shit. Joe from DC, I'm gonna let you see Mike dance for a little bit. I'm gonna let you see Mike comb his hair. You need to make Mike dance. Make Snoop whoop. Subscribe to the channel. Donate. Anyway, back to the lecture, man. So, uh, this white women entering into the workforce was a motherfucker, man. And they knew that this was cause these fucking problems, bro. They knew this shit. They knew this shit. Anytime... Anytime black men have been able to make a fucking move in this country, them motherfuckers been around to shut the shit down. How you gonna let him have it? You can give it to me. Every time. It's like fucking Charlie Brown, man. And the goddamn football. That's what they are, man. Them motherfuckers is Lucy, man. Women, both black and white, were better prepared to deal with the educational qualifications of an economy based on high technology, uh, high technology and service industries. No, the, the question is why? It's not as if black men don't have the capacity to read. I'm reading right now. Am I not reading? Is, is it impossible for black men to read? But we do know that there's a problem with the educational system and how black men are educated. This shit needs to be turned around, man. Because the world has changed. It's different. And a lot of black men have decided to go with the trap economy. And it's alluring. I, I can tell you from experience, that shit is alluring. Given the opportunity, if you don't know how to read very well, if you know that you're, you exist in a hostile environment, going to the trap is easy. That's why you hear all this goddamn music out here. Black men have opted for the trap instead of finding a sector of this fucking economy to master. And it's going to have to deal with technology and industry. Black men need to learn how to fucking code. Black men need to know how to build shit. Booker T. Washington was right, man. Booker T. Washington was right. The boys fucked up. These talented temp niggas ain't shit. I'm sorry, man. I just got to say that. I got to tell the truth. Women, both black and white were better prepared to deal with the educational qualifications of an economy based on high technology and service industries. They require basic reading and writing skills precisely at the time when the public school system began to decline in its ability to produce students with those attributes. 
During this period, black and Hispanic males had the highest rate of functional illiteracy among the 23 million Americans so classified. Estimates are that as many as 40% of the black male population is not able to read and write well enough to function in a technological society. That shit is fucking sad. And it pisses me off, man. Estimates are that as many as 40% of the black male population is not able to read and write well enough to function in a technological society. Moreover, the black male's functional illiteracy can be traced to our problems in America's urban school system. Which, by the way, is packed to the motherfucking top of the can like sardines with a whole bunch of so-called do-gooding ass Beckys and Karens and shit. Moreover, I don't want to read that again. One explanation is that when a black male perceives the opportunity structure as not allowing for his upward mobility through education, he is more likely to divert his energy into sports, music, or hustling. I told you that shit. We got to change this culture, man. On the other hand, black females with fewer opportunities continue to progress in the same educational system, possibly because, as Hale has noted, traditional classrooms or orientated towards feminine fucking values. Now you're starting to redeem yourself, bro. Stay with you, re Ronald O'Neill, man. Okay. I you got to pass now, bro. Because now you're starting to get to the reality of what the fuck's going on. Now you're starting to get to the reality of what's going on. These, I just had a talk with my father, man. My father is 80 years old. We had a conversation last night about this very same issue. The very same issue. And he told me, these classrooms do not work for black boys. My father was a custodial engineer in the Chicago school system, working for the Board of Education for the city of fucking Chicago, South Side, and West Side. Now he was making damn near eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year, fucking twenty years ago, working in the public school system, running a gang of custodians. And he told me, "What the fuck is going on in this school system is tragic and ought to be fucking against the law." Word to my father, man. Word to my father, man. Shout out to my pops, man. What's good, pops? Teachers are disproportionately female, and the behaviors tolerated and most encouraged are those that are most natural for girls. We got to get our boys out of this punk ass school system, man. Real talk. These school systems are killing us, man. The same general trends also occur to varying degrees among whites, but they affect their family structure differently. White male teenagers have an unemployment rate at half that of the officially recorded rate for black males. Moreover, the white male teenager ultimately uses his kinship and the friend of the family networks for more effectively, uh, more effectively to secure employment. They got the good old boy hookup. Uh, I live, you hear me? They got the hookup. But black men 
or black male teenagers who lack such networks drop out or never join the workforce. This is something Orlando Patterson talks about in relation to affirmative action and why there's a need for it. But he, he says that there's cultural capital in having social networks and black people lack access to those networks. The poor unemployment or the poor employment prospects for young black males is illustrated by the fact that some employers refuse to hire them for jobs that were totally subsidized by federal funds. Refuse to hire them. Lack of steady employment largely accounts for black males' high enlistment in the military, drug and alcohol abuse, participation in criminal activities, ultimately leaving less than half of the black male population as rational husbands and father candidates. One other distinguishing characteristic of the black population is the early age at which black women give birth to their first children. More than 40% of black women have given birth at least once by the time they reach 20 years of age what the fuck and this perpetuates the cycle especially as it pertains to black boys because they don't know how to deal with these issues they don't know how to even begin to conceptualize and understand the problems because if they actually fucking did they wouldn't be saying half the shit they saying And they wouldn't be doing half the shit they're doing. Estimates are that only one sixth of the black males in that age range have jobs. Come on, man. A 20 year old motherfucking black male ain't going to be able to support your pregnant black young ass. Understand that shit. But see, you know what? At that age, motherfuckers ain't thinking with they, their head. They thinking with their fucking gonads. Should they marry before age 20, more than 7 out of 10 such marriages fail. Exacerbating this situation is the fact that even gainfully employed black men earn significantly less than white men. In 82, the median income of black men was 10 G's compared with 15,000 for white men. Under positive conditions, there are good indications that the black family is strong. College educated black women, for example, have their children later and in smaller numbers than any social, economic, or racial group in the U.S. Now, this is to be expected because anybody that is has goals outside of the context of a familial arrangement is going to have less time to be fucking around, fucking, and doing other stupid ass shit. Animals can fuck. I'm going to show you a video. I'm going to put, if I can find this video clip, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said, Black men and women should not be fucking married to each other at all and engaging in all these goddamn extra marital fuck activities up until the, they get to fucking age of 30, 35. Then they should consider it. If you ain't got your shit together and you fucking and producing kids, how you gonna get them together? Because you in crisis mode trying to get yourself together, trying to raise them. Although college-educated black males earn less income than white male high school dropouts, approximately 90... You, now, look, now look at that shit and tell me this ain't fucked up. College-educated black men earn less income than white male high school dropouts. So I don't want to hear shit about no fucking black male privilege. I don't want to hear that shit.
Approximately 90% of them are married and living with their spouses. That ain't happening no more. I guarantee you that shit has changed. Because the culture from the bottom has now influenced the culture up top. It ain't uncommon to have college thoughts now. These classy ladies like to stand up in fancy restaurants and start twerking and shit. Dropping it while it's hot in the motherfucking roof, Chris Steakhouse. Right now, right about now, during su fucking Sunday dinner. Just fuck it. Just fuck it. Just stand on the, the furniture and start fucking shaking your ass to goddamn amigos or something. Lil Uzi Vert and Future. Or Mulatto or some shit. Or Megan the Stallion. Man. While probably a sexually active as lower income black women, they are more effective in the use of birth control and more likely to resort to abortion if pregnancy occurs. Hold on, I, let me rewind that, man. Let me let me let me let me rewind that, man. Let me go back. Cause I I I I read too fast, man. <laughs> Under positive conditions, there are good indications that the black family is strong. College-educated black women, for example, have their children later and in smaller numbers than any other socioeconomic or racial group in the U.S. While probably as sexually active as lower-income black women, they are more effective in the use of birth control and more likely to resort to abortion if pregnancy occurs. Now, there are some guys out here who say that, you know, we're killing the black population through abortion, but, hey, I'm, I'll leave, you, uh, leave it up to you for your interpretation of that. Although college-educated black males earn less income than white male high school dropouts, approximately 90% of them are married and living with their spouses, where negative social conditions are absent, family ideology prevails. A central question that remains is why black family ideology has not changed or adjusted to changing conditions. One answer is that it has changed among one stratum of the black population, the middle class. Within that segment of the black community, mainstream values, even changing ones, are stronger because they have a higher level of acculturation into those norms due to their greater participation in the majority group's institutions. I'm just trying to make sense of it, okay? Even among this group, however, traditional values are still strong and exert, and exert an influence on their ideological posture towards the family. In part, that is a function of their recent entry into the middle class and the retention of values from their class of origin. You know what they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? In part, that is a function of their recent entry into the middle class and the retention of the values of their class of origin. Another factor, however, is that their participation in mainstream institutions and embrace of normative ideologies are still marginal keeping traditional values attractive to many. Gary and his associates found that their middle-class black subjects cited their family life as the source of the most satisfaction, while the source of least satisfaction was their jobs. Hence, traditional family life remains the one viable option for black Americans of all social economic strata because it is less subject to the vagaries of race than any other institution in American life. That has changed now. There's no solace in the family anymore. I don't see it. I'm just being honest. What solace is there in the family? One that's prone to divorce. One that's prone to problems that can lead to violence. One's, and when those problems present themselves, then it's the man who ends up fucking being punished for all of it. I'm telling you right now, man, this save yourself shit is, is this some real shit, man. Because you can't get that right if this ain't right. You can't get the family life right if you don't got your shit right. Bottom line, and it ain't looking good for us. 
Similarly, lower income black sustained traditional family beliefs about marriage and the family because the many traumas experienced by this group have cultivated a stronger belief in the value of the family as a resource in their survival in a society not always hospitable to their aspirations. Other than the church, the family has been the only institution to serve as a vehicle for resisting oppression and facilitating their movement towards social and economic equality. Another factor may be the continued physical and social isolation of blacks, especially lower income blacks, from members of the majority group who are in the forefront of social and cultural change. In any context of social change, there is a gap between the ideal statements of a culture and the reality in which people live out their lives. A time lag between the emergence of new cultural forms and their internalization by the individuals who must act upon them. Thus, it would appear that black family ideologies will change only as their social and economic isolation diminishes. In many ways, this situation is nothing new for the black population. Social scientists continue to view the deterioration of the family as the problem, when in reality, the reason for being of black family structures is the structural conditions that prevent the fulfillment of black family ideology. Given the present political and economic trends, there's little reason to expect an abatement of these trends in the black family. In fact, female-headed families are projected to be 59% of all black families with children by the year 1990. Huh. Shit, it's already past that. Almost 75% of black children will live in such families. And 70% of blacks with incomes below the poverty level will belong to these families. The problem of the black family cannot be solved without resolving the economic predicament of black men. They are one and the motherfucking same. Now I'm getting out of that. I tried to let you know. So I'm reading this. And I think that this just points and highlights something that black men know all, like, instinctively why there's all of this discussion and this conversation about black girl magic and all this shit black girls rock black girls vote black girl this black girl that if black girls want some black men to fucking have families with if they really actually want that they're going to have to try to fight against the system and stop trying to fucking attack black men and calling them trash that is if that's what you actually want unless you are comfortable and feel happy and revel in black male dysfunction and you really don't see any provisions for the future for the increase of well-being and the flourishing and functioning and thriving of the black male population. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I said, you cannot have a functioning and a thriving and a flourishing black community without leaving out a part of the community. Now, fuck the family in terms of an ideology, a pie in the sky reality, you know, for how to live a good life. First of all, you have to have a coalition between a male and a female to rear children. All this shit that Black Lives Matter is talking about, all these black lesbian women are talking about, we can have networks of women doing this shit, that's not going to work, man. That shit has never worked throughout the history of any group of people on the fucking planet. It's never, ever worked. I'm going to tell you why. Think about this. If you want to be the greatest hunter you can be you have to have two functioning eyes not one i mean you, your depth perception and everything is going to be off if you only have one fucking eye now you might close your eye to make take a shot but you have to have a fucking panoramic field of view but be able to turn your head if only one of your eyes is working you're not in the optimal position to hunt Use another analogy. If it's the case that 
everything is good on your body except for your kidneys. Fuck how healthy your heart is. Fuck how healthy your liver and your spleen are. Fuck how great your intestines are and your prostate. Fuck how great your ovaries are and your vaginal walls. If your fucking kidneys are fucking not functioning, you're going to have a problem. Because we're dealing with an organism. And if there's dysfunctional parts within an organism, you're going to have dysfunctional performance. The same is true of a car, an automobile. If, for instance, your engine is running the tip-top shape, but the alternator is fucked up, or there's something wrong with your spark plugs, or there's something fucked up with your oil reservoir, the, the, the vehicle is not going to work great. So this piecemeal strategy of looking at one segment of the black population and saying that they rocking, they've been holding it down, and they're doing it this way, and we got it that way. Look, the system is bearing down on us like a fucking ton of rocks. It's time to change it. But it'll require some effort, a Herculean effort. I'm talking about the 12 labors of Hercules. I'm talking about doing something mythical fantastical, something like what Muhammad did for the Bedouins of the goddamn Middle East. I'm talking about something that like Moses did when he parted the Red Sea and got his people out of Egypt land. It's going to take a fucking Herculean effort to get out of this shit. And unfortunately, at the current moment, we don't have the help of the black female population because they're too busy worried about their own advancement. And at least if you can't do it for grown black men, try to provide some sort of fucking path for your boys. Because you're going to give birth to boys. Either you're going to neuter them or empower them or ensure that the structural conditions that exist that they live in will begin to improve. I left the invite, man. I'm not going to stay here doing this. I Look, I didn't even expect to come on today. I just decided to come on in order to... Uh, I decided to come on in order to finish this up, man. And, and I've done my work, and now I can get on with the rest of my day and just sit back and chill. But having done what I did, I feel like some ground was broken in my understanding. I don't know about yours, but I don't like the first part of the article because it just seems like everything must be done in service of women. Fuck the family, man. The family cannot be saved. At least at the end, he hits a crescendo. And I, and I, and I like the way the song begins to sound at the end. Because in the end, there's no solving the problem of the black family without resolving the economic predicament of black men. They are one and the same problem. So you can't, on the one hand, talk about advancing yourself and then at the same time talk about you want to advance the interest of family life. You can't do them both. Now, I done already put the shit out there. Either you want it or you don't want it. Either you want to have a conversation or you don't. I'm going to give you one minute. I'm about to back off and go into a, a commercial. And uh, after that, I'm off to this thing, man. If you ain't, if don't nobody come in, I'm out. Peace.
We're back, man. I'm the G with a PhD, and you're tuned in to the Green Gorilla Channel. It's the place where black men can express themselves freely, straight up, no chaser. I'd have been talking for damn near an hour and 45 minutes. And uh, I've had fun. I got the new system up and going. You see Kit underneath the Green Gorilla icon. Uh, nobody has decided to join, so I'm going to bid you brothers farewell. I got to holler at y'all later, man. I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. And look, I've been doing this shit on black men and the media. And very few of y'all have been coming in and have been donating to that service that I'm providing on Mondays, man, related to the media. I'm going to discontinue that shit if y'all don't come in, man. And I'm going to do something different. But I want you to come in and, and, and get that good information. Because you know you need to know how to push back against these companies, man. Start writing some letters, man, and talking to these people, man, and demanding that we get a better representation than the ones that they offer up for us and the public to consume through popular entertainment. Anyway, man, I'll holler at y'all next time, man. One. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Phenomenon, I shine like Orion. I came in a rap gang to smack it up like Heron, transform it like Megatron. Wait, like I'm a Tron. Most rappers are some peons. I'ma starve them like Ramadan. I'm troublesome. You don't really want no trouble, some. Cause I pop guns like hood, tick, do bubble gum. I've been dumb. Gonna stay that way till kingdom come. When the sun I'm at, unleash a demon of Polygon. I'm heavy, son. Got more knowledge than Farrakhan. More gang than Cap. Come on, that bitch, some ning don one. Stay lit off some Shandan. May Baba Kade Ram stay great to some Nordstrom. Call me that Dapper Don. More violent than Genghis Khan. The demon. Was a Taliban niggas faker than silicon Get hit like a dot com Like soldiers in Lebanon I'm bringing that red rum When I get through with you son You gon' think I'll see rap Run! I carry weight like a heavyweight Break more cakes than patty cake Watch the fiends salivate You a lightweight Phantom weight Better contemplate If you violate Make you levitate to the pearly gates I fascinate when I conversate From the show me state Where these niggas love to hate And hot murder rate Or the waste But this flow is just a taste of God's grace Shining this light in an ugly place In a prophecy Got more wisdom than Socrates for Philosophies. You don't really want no parts of me, can't you see? I'm sticking in Mephistopheles, stronger than Hercules. More things than the third of please the MCs, trying me, pretty please. I went up they white tees, knock them out they wallabies. Now they touch my deliries. But coming up short in the little seas when I break out the killer bees. I slept in music by Karkasi, hit chicks look like a shanty. When I'm breaking them off, they yell out, I'm poppy. You rack rappers is sloppy, you can't stop me with that. We can stop it, copy, copy, my lucky. I'm a monster like Frankenstein, rock harder than Palestine. You slams, dropping down. The snake is serpentine Can't stand the sneaky glow like knobs with his big shine All you hate is cold in it Cold sores need calamine But my hot shit red What's good everybody? Eon Graves, what's going on bro? Peace, peace, what's going on? What's happening man? Hey look, uh, I let you up in this joint man I, I, I cut off the outro to feel okay. uh, your conversation, man. So, uh, you know, go ahead and talk to me, man, and then let's get this shit over with because the next time I go off, the next time I do an outro, I'm out this thing. You hear me? <laughs> shit, yeah, man. That, that information was very troubling, man, at the least, you know. Um, you know, the systematic, you know, his systematic breakdown of the whole shebang, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know how nobody else is talking about this shit. You know, I don't know. I don't understand. You know. Um, well, you know, I think uh, you, you're right about that, man. But, but you see, at the current moment, the frame has shifted. The frame has shifted away from the plight that black men face. It's shifted mm -hmm. to the, the plight that black women face. So they've made mm -hmm. themselves the preeminent victim of racism. Now they've made themselves the victims of sexism. Right. Right. And the victims of patriarchy from black men. So we're the ones stunting their growth. Right. right. When in actuality, we, we could be encouraging their growth predicated upon their own ideals. But I don't think that they hold on to those ideals anymore. They are part and parcel a part of white feminist culture. That's what they are. Right. They are the adopters, the inheritors of white feminist ideology. And they, I don't care what they say. This is a fact. They can say one thing, but they're doing the exact opposite. <laughs> they're the embodiment. 
I almost think these white women did this shit in order to create dysfunction in our communities for centuries, man. While they go home mm. to their husbands and talk this shit. Because they, look, I know women who spit feminist game in, acad in the academy and then mm -hmm. will say some shit like this. Well, you know, I let my husband take care of all the financial shit. And yeah. still be on some feminist shit. And make yeah. more money than they fucking husbands. Yeah. Yeah. I swear to I mean, God, yeah, that's man. Just, I, like, that's I, just I like it, you had that, you had that, you had that, uh, that, that justice, the, the female white justice that just got nominated. I mean, she was talking about, uh, she's part of this uh, uh, Christian group where submission to a husband is, you know, tantamount a must, you know what I'm saying? And she's a, and she's a, you know, Supreme Court judge. You know what I'm saying? So they got a whole nother mindset than what they're actually portraying, you know what I'm saying, to black women at least, you know. Well, see, here's the deal, man. They, black women and white women are in a different situation. So black women are looking at us like we're conquered. They already mm -hmm. said that. I mean, they put that shit in their heads like, fuck it, they're conquered. There's nothing <laughs> they can do for us. Fuck the system. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to use the system. You know, we'll fuck, we'll fuck the system. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's their man now. The system yeah. is their man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, um, and I call it a racial hypergamy, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, think, we got to go with a resource. I think, I, think at, I think at some point, I think at some point what they're, what they're banking on is that black man would just die off, right? Because that's, that's that, the only way that their narrative can continue is if we just don't exist at all. You know what I'm but, saying? But, but, but Ian... I want you to think about this logically, man. Who gives birth to black men, man? Who gives birth to them, man? The black females. Bottom line. The only way they can get black, rid of black men is to get rid of themselves, bro. That's the only solution. They're not, they it it, they not putting it together. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I want you to think Think about this, man. Just, Just think about it logically, man. The only way you can get rid of black men is to kill yourself. That's the mm -hmm. only way it'll stop. Mm -hmm. You are the producers. You're the fucking manufacturers of black men. Biologically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you hate that to which you give a fucking birth to, there is something pathological about you. It's yep. something pathological. If you hate that which you give birth to, you got a fucking problem. Major. That's a psychological problem. And that Major. problem is going to persist. But see, this racist structure creates that problem to begin with. Mm -hmm. I hate to say this. Th these issues come forth. Now, either they can help solve or resolve the issues, or they can fucking lean in with these white folks and keep reproducing. It's like not going to the doctor. Hmm. It's like avoiding what's necessary to be done in order to get rid of an ailment before mm -hmm. you fucking end up to the point where you're in a position where you get terminal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just this mm -hmm. is just how I see it now. Now, I might be wrong. All I am is one person, man, with one opinion. I think my opinion is somewhat informed in relation to others, but mm -hmm. I don't think that I have all the answers. I might be absolutely wrong about this shit. I might feel, you know, like the angry black man, like I'm just some sort of crazy misogynist. I might fucking be. But explain to me why I'm wrong. Give me a detailed argument of, uh, above and beyond all this shit about white women and what they need and what they want and how they feel like they were locked out of certain domestic sphere. I mean, not locked out of the public sphere. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, you know, like how they were closed off in comfortable concentration camps. I, mm -hmm. I just don't perceive, I don't perceive white women as ever having undergone anything difficult in the entirety of their fucking existence in the Western Hemisphere. Well, not the Western Hemisphere, but at least the Americas. Mm -hmm. I just don't mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. I don't yeah. see I that, mean, man. I, I mean, money, money, is a, money, is, money is agency. You know what I'm saying? So your vote, you know what I'm saying? It's just as we have now, you know what I'm saying? You have lobbyists you know, that lobby the government, like they don't have to vote one way or the other. All they have to do is wait to whoever is in office and then lobby. But that's the same thing as a white woman. A white woman with money, she can lobby whatever she wants. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't have to actually have a, a, a vote, actually. She doesn't have to have the money to lobby to have those who are in power to do what she wants. And that's what's always been the case. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and she has a direct ear to the politicians. Mm-hmm. A direct mm-hmm. ear. Like, the pussy mm-hmm. ear. I mean, I'm just, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like, like, Fuck all that fake that fake ass <laughs> political correctness, man. They know how to put the pussy on the man and to influence him doing the bed talk, bro. Yeah. Let's keep it one hundred, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this, this we, I'm not playing games with this shit anymore, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I mean, it's too many games being played out here. They have yeah. the ear of these men and have always had the ear of these men and have committed atrocities against black people. And then they'll act like they're a fucking sheep, but they're a wolf in sheep's clothing, man. They they yeah. they always come with something that looks beneficial, but it's actually, you know, it, it works to the detriment mm-hmm. of, 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 of any group they're interacting with. They all there's always mm-hmm. a secret. You they talk about us being in the cabal. Them motherfuckers been having uh, cabals. They've been in collusion. <laughs> They've been you know creating subterfuge and con- you know uh, all <laughs> kinds of dissension everywhere. I'm just being yeah. honest, man. Like I'm not trying to be <laughs> ignorant, man. I'm just being honest. You know, no, but right. I can carry this you're on right. all day, bro. I, and, and look, right. I don't even hate white women for real. I don't hate them. You know what I'm saying? But like, the, the, y'all some poisonous motherfuckers. Some of the shit y'all doing is poisonous, man. But I'm going I'm to tell you something that's even more toxic, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a toxic motherfucker. So I'm going to just be honest. I think, goddamn, I, I look at it like this. I just came to the conclusion that black men and black women worship a different God altogether. <laughs> Cause, Cause, there's no way, there's no way that you can go to church every Sunday, and pray for the subjugation and domination of black men every Sunday, and then still think that we both are worshiping the same God. That's impossible. That's impossible. I mean, because because if you worshiping if you worshiping the God for something other than black male domination and subjugation, we should see some benefit from that. You know what I'm saying? We should see some, we we should see some uh, some fruit from that. All, well, you know what, I man? Is, uh-huh. Eon, the, the floor fell out from underneath black men <laughs> with automation <laughs> and the outsourcing of jobs, man. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, the money went away. And so mm-hmm. when the money went away, they went away. And then they were given mm-hmm. a route into money via the women's liberation movement. Mm-hmm. Now, now, like Beyonce, they're feeling themselves. Now they mm-hmm. touching themselves like like uh what what's the <laughs> young girl just said ooh there goes my shirt over my head whatever her name was tweet you know what I'm saying oh god <laughs> so 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 now they feeling themselves bro it just is what it is now I'm not like look the shit is still on and popping for black men that's why I, at first I was kind of like thinking to myself there might be some sort of salvaging. Of the relationship, and it, I think that there could be. I'm not saying that that's out of the realm of possibility, but not until you save black men. Until black men have some salvation and they get some attention, and they're not browbeaten for that attention when they're mm-hmm. able to discuss their issues and to talk about the mm-hmm. shit that's plaguing them, and mm-hmm. to get some assistance and 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 some and some sincere cooperation. Until that begins to happen, yeah, I, I cut ties with. If you if if a black woman ain't on that. I don't want to holler at her, man. Fuck her. I'm I'm serious, man. I holler at you. Yeah, man. yeah. They, they I just, I voted for Angela Stanton King, right? She's over here in um in Georgia, and um shit. They gave me hell when I posted that I voted for her. You know what I'm saying? Cause she had she came out with this thing. Uh, she said the black women are not gonna save us, and uh, the heterosexual black male is. You know, and so you know everybody you here in Atlanta, you know the black male, cause you got a lot of LGBTQ. LGBTQ, black male feminists, black female feminists, goddamn hood feminists, goddamn hood male feminists and shit. They all disagree with that whole with the whole logic that the black male is going to actually be the one uh, that's going to come through and and fix whatever uh, ailment is in our community. This requires the heroism of Heru. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The yeah. The, the 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 heroism of Hercules, whom after mm-hmm. Heru is my I mean, you know, who 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 was modeled after Heru. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This mm-hmm. is it's going to require a divine like reaction. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, there is no solution to this until black men carve out a sector of the economy that they can 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 control. Mm-hmm. And everyone will try to prevent them from being able to gain entry and to gain a market share. Just by virtue of the fact that it's black men doing it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're gonna, but, they're gonna make, they're every, gonna make some program that's gonna say, you know what, black men are getting too much. Y'all need to split that with these females. You know what I'm saying? Man, look, we need a black male Google, <laughs> a black male Amazon, for, for real. Like we need a trade that we do, especially and particularly, and we do it better than anybody in the entire world. Mm. And we need to get it and stick to it and hang around it and hinge around it and circle around it like a fucking I don't know, man. Like it's like we we're gnats on on shit, and we tr and we we share it and we we enculturate young men into it. And it's got to be something that the world needs. Mm -hmm. But I think Booker T. Washington was correct. All this old high browned, high brow, fair minded, respectable bullshit that that uh mm -hmm. the boys put out there, man, was a mm -hmm. trick bag. Mm -hmm. That's all it was, man. It was a trick bag. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, especially is, here in here in it here in Atlanta, people say this is a black mecca, but what they don't understand, what you what you have here is generations of nepotism from uh, wealthy black families that were, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, the black boule, um bootlickers with with white folks. You know what I'm saying? And they have ruled Atlanta, and Atlanta has remained, you know, this you know the, the shithole that it is for some time, even though you had blacks with money. You know what I'm saying? That's just a small minority. You know what I'm saying? You've always had, uh, you know, a lot of black people who were without money, but because they were taught that these black boule were something that they could actually uh, become at some point, you know, they, you know, they were okay with it. Because I always used to walk around. You had, you have, you have a lot of black people here in Atlanta, especially young black males. They all think they're going to be the next. Uh, you know, uh, uh, artists, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, man, well there ain't artists there, and things, you know? Look, there's nothing wrong with artistry, nothing wrong with entertainment, but if that's your goal, like, I, I, look, I love music. I still do it. But that's a one-trick bag. Music is part of a culture. Mm -hmm. Like, when you go to school, you're supposed to be able to play an instrument and do some shit. Mm -hmm. That's not mm -hmm. all you do. Like the, all this professionalism over music, everybody can't be a producer, a rapper, and a motherfucking runway model, and a fucking uh, uh, basketball player or a football player, man. I entertainment yeah. cannot be what we do. And if we right. do do entertainment, why not let's have some fucking production companies, man, where we mm -hmm. make high quality, you know, uh, media for public mm -hmm. consumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right yeah. now, but, the channels but, of distribution have been equalized related to the uh, entertainment industry. You like mm -hmm. right now, I can make a movie on my fucking laptop. You understand right. what I'm saying? So, I mean, all you need to do is have the right kind of. The, right now, the technology is in everybody's fingertips. You got a high definition. If D.W. Griffith did the whole thing with the birth of a nation with less than what we got, <laughs> I'm saying like, I mean, in the 30s and in the, in the 40s, they had less technology than we have. So you mm -hmm. mean to get, we can't put together some high quality shit? If we can't, it's because we ain't trying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then the people that had, then we also got the HNIC syndrome. Everybody wants to be the top top dog instead yeah. of working together progressively like a swarm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and you can't always be the top dog. If you, that's mm -hmm. like you know, like Jordan scoring sixty points, and then ain't nobody else got no assists. I mean, you right. know, he ain't assisting nobody. Ain't nobody else got no scores. You know what I'm right. saying? They're going to lose right. the game. But, I mean, you know, right. Mike did distribute the ball here and there. But that motherfucker was a gunner. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. always win like that, man. Eric, right. You you can't always win like that. You got to have but role the, players. The, the, matri the matriarchy, the, ma the matriarchal social system is what continues to fuel this head nigga in charge syndrome. You know what I'm saying? They're fueling it because they want men to be on that so they can know which one to be the the one that they can choose so that so even if black men are trying to 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 build something together they're going to come in and they're going to lay waste to it you know what i'm saying just so they can have that pick of the male that they want you know what i'm saying they'd rather destroy, they'd rather destroy what we build just to have a, a dude you know what i'm saying then allow us to build a structure that's going to be an umbrella for everybody well but you know that that can only happen like look at the end of the day Black men want to fuck, okay? But black men don't have to find... They can fuck, but they need to wrap it up when they fucking and stop having these babies, these miscellaneous babies with these young-ass girls, man. Bottom line. Mm. And we need to start teaching mm. these young boys, man, like when they about eight, nine years old. Look, you are not... You are a child. When you're 19, you're still a child. When you're 20, you're still a child. 
You might have a grown man body, but in this culture and in this society, you are not equipped with the skills and able to take care of another life and to bring him to functionality, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do that mm -hmm. right now. You don't have that capacity. Mm -hmm. We keep making mm -hmm. the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. But these yeah. young kids, man, they feel like they know every goddamn thing. I, you know, I, but look, bro, I could talk to you. I could talk to you. Uh, I could talk. I could talk, man, to, to the cows come home. I thank you for joining me, brother. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to have to had to close this one out, man. But and, this, you know, that was that was some good information. That article, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought it was, man. I, I you know, and look, yeah. the only thing I'm trying, I, I know that nothing was said in that article that hasn't been said in this space before. I know that. But it right. puts it all together in one central location, and then it people does. can go back over it and pick through what they consider to be the good points about it and the bad points. And that's all I'm here to do, man. I'm, I don't know every damn thing. I never pretended mm -hmm. to. You know, I'm just reacting. Like, I do reaction videos, bro, predicated mm -hmm. upon the knowledge that I have. Right. But I don't do, you know, reactions to... I do do reactions to dumb shit, but <laughs> but listen, you you need you need you need to be a professor um, in the um, in the T. N. Johnson's um, 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 new school. You know what I'm saying? We we need to we need to start building our own school. You know what I'm saying? You need to be a professor. You know what I mean? That's really how we how we need to move this thing. You know? Yeah, man. But you know these women, man, ain't no telling, man. They might not want their sons to go to them kind of schools. You know, but I think that I think the young boys need to be in boarding school, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like they need to be in live in schools mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they not because you know, the, the women, the women got that. You know what I'm saying? They got that, you know, so that's 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 how they be able to, able to move ahead. Is this they, they've got that kind of attention. Well, all right, my brother, man, I'm out of here, man. Thank you for your participation and you joining me, man. And uh, peace, peace. Appreciate I'll see you tomorrow, you. man. Join me tomorrow. Bro. All right. Peace okay, out. I will. I will. All right. Peace. Peace. All right, y'all, man. I, you know, I, I was glad I had the opportunity to speak with Brother Eon, but uh, alas, I'm done, man. I'll see y'all next time.